Yo, so today we got a question from our very ambitious young friend. He is on his way to becoming a amateur bodybuilder. He's studying for his personal trainer certification. He's studying consistently for business. He wants to own his own business where he helps people with disabilities through exercise. Very admirable. He also happens to be from a family that is somewhat struggling, especially financially. And he says over the past six years, he's moved five times because his family can't afford to pay the rent. And now he's in a place where he's, he's branching out in his own way to become a man, becoming a man by making decisions about what he wants to become and how he's going to do it. And as he's making his tippy toes in that direction and, and having some experiences in that direction, he's stricken with fear. Now he doesn't say this, I say that. The way he describes it is that he has sleepless nights. He's constantly battling with anxiety. He's going to see doctors because he just can't seem to uh, put a, a rest to this restlessness. And he knows that if he's ever going to help other people and if he's going to become the strongest version of himself, he had all better get some sleep and he had better figure out how to deal with this anxiety that's associated with all of the history of insecurity as well as the ambition of moving forward. That's really the deep question here that many of us may be able to relate to. How do I work my way towards what I'm ambitious about when I have quicksand under my feet? I have no stability. You have no, you seemingly have no stability. Many of us, you know, we're, we're deep in debt. How am I ever going to do what I want to do? Achieve the goals I seek to achieve when I've got all this debt. How am I going to make this happen when I don't have? How am I going to move forward when I have a history that has conditioned me through fear? Because it is a fearful situation, especially for your parents. And parents, our energy moves towards the children whether we speak it or not. They feel what's happening. And if you have parents who had to move five times in six years because they can't pay their rent, those are fearful people. They're probably fearful and that's why they got in this situation. And the situation, your circumstances always just play back your sentiment. So if you're fearful, you're gonna get fearful shit. So you're coming from a cesspool of fear, my friend, and you have great, strong ambitions. How do you go about it? Well, First, I'll give you some abstract ideas, some things that you can chew on for a little while that you might want to consider. And if they help you today, great. If they don't, maybe one day you can come back and, and use it. And then I'll give you some practical applications, some practical things that you can do to make your way out of this because I've been there. I know what it's like to be deeply in debt, have a mortgage you can't pay, a wife and two children at that time, but you can't put food on the table for, have a truck that has uh, no window on it and it rains on you and there's no, you don't have gasoline to put in it and, and you have to push it to the gas station and leave it there because there's no money on your card to put gas in there and you've got a myriad of other things going on that make you fearful and sick and you feel like you're standing on quicksand. I've been there. I just described my story and I'm here and I'm in a pretty good place and I want to show you how. The very first idea, the abstract part that I want you to get through your head is that you will always be taken care of. As long as you're true to yourself and you're true to your values, as long as your ambition isn't ego gratification but heart fulfillment, you will be taken care of. When your ambition is shiny objects, you're going to have a difficult time because shiny objects don't come till much later. Shiny objects don't come till you've began actually serving people. And it takes time to create the infrastructure where you actually serve people. So your whole business idea through strength training and bodybuilding for those with disabilities is going to take some time. You get the shiny objects after you've served those people. That's how people get shiny objects. 
unless they use credit cards like most of our society does. A lot of, a lot of the people who have nice shit, they don't have nice shit, they got debt. Oh, that's a great car, nice Escalade you got there, Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones don't own shit, the bank owns her. But if your ambition is to fulfill your heart's calling, see, this is where the sentiment from which you proceed matters more. You will always be cared for. You will always be taken care of. Your needs, not your wants, your needs will always be met when you're following your heart's calling. I have a deep and profound compassion for those with disabilities and I sacrifice myself in a direction by which I can serve them. It's a very different thing than I want to own shiny objects and lots of shiny objects and I want to control people and have power over them. Those are things that are byproducts of doing the right thing by serving people. And even, now I'm talking about the shiny objects. Power over people is something that is, uh, I should make a whole other video about that. It's one that there's a lot of associations with that people that don't understand power uh, have. I'm doing a lot of digressing today, so I'm just going to come back. So my friend, make sure your heart is in the right place. When you head out on that journey, and it's a righteous journey, you will be cared for, your needs will be met. In other words, you'll have food on your belly and a shirt on your back. Roof over your head and that's it. Don't expect anything else. Everything else besides that, if you can answer those questions, because now we start getting into the practical uh, practicality of this. If you can answer those questions, did I eat a meal today? Do I have shoes on my feet and a shirt on my back? a roof over my head, and just enough means by which I can fulfill my heart's desire, fulfill my heart's purpose. You see, the type of business I have, I was lucky enough to come up right when, in 2007, YouTube came out. In 2007, I started making videos. Serendipitous. I didn't make that happen, or did I? Serendipity happened, whereby I don't have advertising money, but I got a cheap-ass camera. I still have a cheap ass camera and I make videos. You see, so the means will always be there and even if you don't have the, the finances, the technology or the, the, the good kinded heartedness of other people, somehow you're gonna get what you need if it's in pursuit of your heart's calling. Boom, that's it. Only thing you should expect. Anything that surrounds that circumstance that creates bad feelings, meaning I have a roof over my head, Elliot, but I don't have next month's rent. I have uh, food, Elliot, but uh, it's not the food that I really want. Anything that comes from a place of fear, anything in those circumstances that puts fear or bad feelings in your body, you have to ignore completely. I, don't, I didn't say, do you have six months rent in your bank account? I said, is there a roof over your head? Yes. I'm late on my bills this month. Ah, but do you have a roof over your head? Yes, don't worry about it. Your landlord will perhaps figure something out to help you. You gotta set aside the things that make you feel bad about your circumstances. Ignore them completely. And I say ignore not so that you may live in ignorance. I say ignore because they're not resourceful things to consider when you're a, a man moving forward in his calling, towards his heart's calling. You can't be tangled up with the, the, the ideas of I'm $90,000 in credit card debt. See, I was $90,000 in credit card debt and I stopped thinking about it. You know what I did? I got myself on a payment plan and I kept working. And I worked and I worked and I worked. I had nothing and I paid off almost $100,000. It was a little over ninety. Almost six figures worth of debt I paid off because I stopped thinking about the debt and I started working to serve people. I did that all through my old ass gym on the south side of St. Pete with crackheads and prostitutes. That's how I made that money. And an ebook I created with a friend called Lean Hybrid Muscle. I paid off debt with that. I got myself out of the quicksand with that. You see? Now I have shiny things because I'm standing on firm ground because I did what I'm about to tell you. 
The next thing you need to do, my man, is to remember that you are to live in this world because you chose to be here. We all chose to be here, but be not of it. Meaning, don't let the tumult and the, the anxiety, the, the, the craziness, the tornado, that's why I'm doing this, you know, I talk with my body. Don't let the tornado carry you away. Don't let the tornado of life turn you upside down and knock you over the head with a bunch of shit that's in the tornado also. Debt is one of those things that's shit. How much shit do you want in there too? That's another question. When you're getting tossed around, you don't want too much shit in there. You don't want woman problems, that's one I'll tell you. When you get tossed around because you're following your heart, don't get tangled up with a woman that doesn't understand you. I watch too many guys. They lose it all because, and when I say lose it all, I mean they lose their heart and soul because of a woman. Vice versa as well. So what you need to do, what I'm telling you to do, is to meditate. That's one of the very few principles that I put my foot down on and say you must do. You must meditate. You must find a way every single day to take yourself out of the storm and go into the eye of the storm. I've used this metaphor before. Don't step out of the storm. See, most people, they think that uh, doing drugs and drinking alcohol, partying with their friends or watching television, right? That's one that many of us get trapped in, watching TV or watching YouTube videos all day long. Stop watching my fucking videos and go do something. Or, or, or any form of entertainment or distraction is relaxing for them. No, that's called escape. That means I'm stepping outside of the tornado. Now you've checked out of life. You've checked out of everything that you're, you, you, you believe in, all your values and where you're going. I say move to the eye of the storm where you're fully engaged with the storm because it's going around you, but you're at peace because you're in the eye of it, at the center. You're at the center of yourself. Come home to your center. Meditation is medicine, just like Prozac and alcohol. Except it doesn't leave you with a hangover or addiction. It leaves you, it leads you to a stronger version of yourself because you carry meditation with you. If I didn't meditate, I wouldn't be here because the world would have carried me away. You, my friend, must make use of meditation and there are many different forms of it and I don't sit here and, 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 uh, and claim to have a patent on any of them. I happen to like yoga and bioenergetics. These are forms of body, body psychology, body meditation. Osho has many dynamic meditations. Again, they're all body meditations. I'm a body guy. I'm a body builder. I'm in the body. I feel all my power comes from my body. So I do body type meditations. There are sitting meditations where you just sit and you breathe. You just focus on your breath. Whatever works for you, but explore many different forms of meditation and don't let anybody give you their patented meditation and tell you that's the only one. The only requirement of meditation is that you become closer to your truth. You can become closer to your center. You become closer to who you are. Many people jog. That's their meditation. They run. And I've experienced that one too. It's a good one. Exercise. You've got to meditate. The second thing is very likened unto what I told you before about ignoring the circumstances and focusing on where you're going. And that is to automatically dissociate from negative thoughts. I've made videos about this, about how to, uh, how to deal with negative thoughts or something of that fashion. Search my channel. You've got to detach yourself from, from negative thoughts. A lot of people, you know, some of you are so clever. Well, what does that mean, Elliot? Do I just ignore reality? No, motherfucker, you create your reality by taking your eyes off of what you have and put it on, or what you don't want and put it on what you do want because you create your reality. I create my reality. I knew what I didn't want and I turned my eyes away from it and put it on what I wanted. And you need to do the same thing. And those of you that are too clever to figure that shit out, too clever to try that shit out, or you want science to prove it, fuck you. Keep living miserably. You want something amazing, you want a mystical life? 
trust this one idea. Give it a try. Mystery. The mystery of these things. That's all I want to do is point you in the direction of the mystery. I have no answers. The mystery of creating your life. Because no one who's created their life can tell you exactly how they did it. But there are certain ways of being that they were. And that's the most important thing to consider. Be meditative and be focused on what you do want. And I'll stop there because this is probably about a 20 minute video. So that's it my friend. Listen, I'm going to finish this way. For you to become a success out of the depths of dysfunction that you're coming from will not only be a gift for yourself, but a gift for seven generations forward. You rid yourself of the sins of your parents, your children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, and so forth will receive the gift of your transcendence beyond their sins. And I've also heard it put this way, that by you overcoming the sins that your parents laid upon you, when I say sins, I'm not judging your parents as bad people, I'm saying they gave you fear. You grew up in fear. You free them from their sins, and you free seven generations before you of that sin. You grow stronger not for yourself in this mere moment you spend on earth. You grow stronger for your legacy and for those who might not never know your name because they need you. And we need you as you spread the seeds of your light while you walk this planet. Keep growing stronger. Done.